Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm Athena, I'm the host of Finding My Fit Podcast and I'm here today to tell you guys all about the armor divers. Now in this video, I'm probably going to switch between armor and AMA because I'm not too sure how the word is pronounced. It's A-M-A. So I'm probably going to say armor and AMA sort of interchangeably. So who are the armor divers? Now they are a group of female free divers who dive into the ocean and they've braved the depths of, you know, up to about 20 meters, which might not sound like a lot, but that's actually quite deep to go, especially considering the fact that they don't use any scuba gear or air tanks. And a lot of people sort of trace the aimer divers back to around the 8th century or even up to 5,000 years ago. Nobody really knows the exact date because it was so long ago, but the first sort of records of the Aimer Divers were way, way back then. But the first sort of records were way, way back then. In ancient Japan, women were considered superior divers due to their abilities to hold their breath for long amounts of time underwater. And a lot of the time, the best divers were those who had a really good distribution of body fat. So that kind of helped them to stay buoyant in the water. Armour usually begin to dive at around the age of 12 and they are taught by an older armour who already has experience. Many armours are still diving way into their 70s and 80s because for so long they've been practicing this sort of style of swimming and they've built up the amazing ability to hold their breath and they sort of maintain this ability for the rest of their lives. So armour divers back in like the sort of 1800s slash 1900s would actually go and dive for fresh seafood using, you know, minimal gear. And there are two different terms for the gear that they wore. Now I'm gonna read it off my laptop because I'm gonna get these words probably very wrong. So the two terms are tenugi, tenugi, I'm probably saying that completely wrong, but that's basically a bandana. And also fundoshi, which is a loincloth. So I'm really sorry if I butchered those names, but those are the sort of equipment that they use slash clothing gear that they use, as opposed to the traditional scuba gear that we see nowadays. Usually that gear was all white. Now this gear switched up a little bit past the late 1800s, but traditionally they still don't use very much clothing gear or equipment to dive, even in the modern day. And that is mainly because the armor really believe in preserving nature as much as possible. They resisted the use of tools and neoprene based uh, scuba gear for a long time. And that's because they viewed this kind of gear and equipment as potentially dangerous for the ocean and, you know, the sea life that is found in the ocean. Unfortunately, the armor divers are actually at their lowest numbers nowadays, with just under 2,000 divers still sort of remaining. You know, the tradition still goes on, but I think over time, fewer and fewer people have wanted to sort of risk going into the ocean with very minimal gear because you know the ocean is kind of scary and a lot of the time if you're diving to really deep depths you are going to need an oxygen tank to help you out however the the culture you know the tradition still remains and it's definitely something that you could learn more about if you want to you can just head online you can search and read about them it's really really interesting hopefully this video has given you a nice little introduction to the armor divers sorry if i've been saying armor wrong and it's actually Aima. I'm sorry if I've butchered any of the sort of Japanese sounding names in this video. I tried my best. If you want to check out my podcast, it's just Finding My Fit. It's on every major podcast platform and I cover everything health, fitness and nutrition related. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.